This is an educational course on the building techniques of switching power supplies. I'd like to thank the following companies for helping me out in my adventure. I'll be your design engineer and host for this project. Welcome to the LPPT lithium battery power supply charger. This is our circuit board right here. We've already marked the holes where we're going to drill to lay out for this. So we're going to drill those out right now. Okay, we got our holes drilled and then we installed our spacers. Okay, we got the board installed. It's mounted on the spacers. Now we can mark where the components are going to go. Okay, so I marked the board, all the holes where the pins got to go. Basically, uh, I use Sharpie right here. I have to push the pins in on the outside perimeter for these power circuits right here and over on this side right here because I have to mount the mechanical for the holes for those heat sinks to go into here. Pushed in the pins for the outer perimeter and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount these components here. I got to drill six more holes and I want to get this drilling out of the way because I don't want to stop and have to do it again. So before I push in the rest of the pins what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this and I'm going to show you how uh, I align this to drill holes in the heat sink so they can have their mounting on. Bent these leads because they got to go up into the pins on these cards to affect the mounting. What I'm doing, I'm going to snip off these leads right here so I can slide that underneath to these pins. And when I get them all set up to do that, then I'm going to solder them. And then once they're soldered in, I can drill the holes. Now what I'll do is I'll drill the holes here put the screws in so it can have heat sink attachment. I'm going to clip these and solder these components and uh, redirect the fire over on this side over here. Okay so basically I've soldered in the parts and uh, as you can see right here it looks a little strange at first it's like because the cabinet's made out of aluminum I mean there's your heat sink right there look at that chunk of metal I mean this stuff works wonders so Okay, I got the holes all drilled. It took me about 45 minutes. Okay, so I'm back today. Uh, we're going to be pushing in the pins now for these integrated circuits and transistors and FETs, whatever. Okay, so I pushed in the pins. It's like a little over 100 of them, actually. It don't look like it, but... Okay, what I got to do now is got to solder in the IC socket first before you put anything else on the board because this is tight in here to get a soldering iron in between there. Okay, so I got the IC socket soldered in, as you can see right there. Okay, so we glued in our fuse clips. Okay, so I finished soldering in the surface components, uh, mainly the LM337 and 317 regulators. And um, over here is... Uh, a couple little two power MOSFETs they are going to drive a little power uh, transformer core. Um, actually this is a little miniature inverter right here because it turns DC into AC to drive these FETs over here. Alright so I'm back and I finished wiring up the converter and uh, putting on the rest of the service components and uh, I'll give you a peek at that right here. Uh, while we're looking at this I want to thank uh, Allied Electronics for uh, sending me parts so quick on the spur of the moment and uh, magnetic test labs for the cores I virtually gap cores and one day I had them to me the next day I uh, really appreciate it so much here's the wiring underneath basic output is uh, 30 volts right here 28 30 volts about 15 amps then over here I got uh, this is plus or minus 12 volts and plus 12 volts this is the FET drive right here this is the op amp supply and integrated circuits and I'm going to install this into the uh, switching supply and I'll show you the rest of that okay so I have uh, assembled the converter onto the side of the heat sink which is actually the side of the cabinet and now I'm going to assemble this together now I'm going to mount the side of the cabinet together right here and I'll assemble the rest of that and I'll be back okay so we're going to turn this thing on now and check out the converter okay 
all is well, it's working. So what I have here today is my uh, switching power supply that I just finished construction on and uh, it's charging these uh, two lithium batteries over here. This is my portable uh, AC power source. Uh, it has two computer operated advanced technology lithium batteries. Uh, this thing can run my uh, refrigerator right here for 11 hours straight. It's a Maytag. You see right here it's pumping about 20 amps per battery so this thing has an output of 40 amps. I'll show you the insides of this here as soon as it's done charging. Okay, so what I've done now is I've removed the lid so we can take a peek inside. Uh, what we have here on the right side over here is a 60 kilohertz switching converter and on the left side is another 60 kilohertz switching converter. These power this regulator right here, a switching regulator. There's one half, there is the other half. They are completely electrically isolated from each other so you can connect the output in series to get like 26.7 volts or in parallel for 14.6. Now this has three stage charging. It charges up to 14.6 and then it begins to taper by current. When it gets in around 3 amps then it drops into float. So we're going to take a quick little aerial view of this. There's the one switching converter over there. It shows you the three power fits on the back. There's the switching diode. It's a digital circuitry and regulation circuitry with the calibration trim potentiometers right there in blue. Dual 20 amp transfer relay. Inductors wound by Fowler, uh, 12 gauge. So in conclusion, um, the technical specifications on this uh, charger, even though it's charging lithium batteries, it does it with double chargers at balanced voltage. So it keeps the lithium batteries, it helps them to stay balanced as modules. Uh, they do balance themselves internally by the electronics of the battery, uh, but this assists it even better. Uh, the next reason is uh, I designed these converters that they're lightweight. This whole unit weighs about 10 pounds. And the next reason is that it has universal AC-DC input. You can not only plug it into the wall to a generator, but you could also plug it into five Mitsubishi 255 solar panels in series, and it'll work all the fine. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, watching this project and I'll be back next time.